New in Mudbox 2009 is the ability to paint texture layers. You can see up here beside our Sculpt Layers we have a Paint Layer tab. I'm just going to jump down beside the Sculpt Tools here to our Paint Tools tab. Start off with an airbrush. Now anywhere I click on my geometry it's actually going to bring up a little menu asking me what kind of layer I want to create. It's going to ask me what kind of resolution I want. Our defaults range from 256 down to uh, 4K as well as a bit depth from 8 to 32 bit and a different list of channels that we can go ahead and paint here. I'm just going to keep it in diffuse and we'll just start off with this, this spray brush here. I'm just going to drop down some uh, base layer on this. So I could just start blasting some color in here and of course like any of our other tools there I can turn my symmetry on. So we'll leave it on an X and so I can just start working on both sides here simultaneously and just kind of paint some some base color down here and just get some really simple uh, underlying base color here that I can start out with. So I'm just going to paint across the top of his head. That'll do. And then of course on the fly I can just change that color. Maybe we'll change this to more of a an off-white here. And I'm going to come down and just keep my brush resolution kind of large. And I'm just going to paint just a little bit of a base area here for the chest region in here. So that'll do there. I'm just going to go ahead and create a whole new layer. It's going to ask me what I, where I want that layer to be. You can see that it puts it under this nice stack here because I picked the same thing with a diffuse there. So I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to bring my brush radius down and I'll just zoom in to my um, these little folds behind the, the eye here. And let's just grab something like maybe a, uh, a red to work with here. And we can just quickly start to work in some striping along this guy here and I'm just going to change some of this maybe get a black going in here as well and uh, so I'm just using the paintbrush to rough in some things here as well I can also jump into my um, pencil here and the pencil is a great little tool for allowing you to just start throwing in some detail and you can see that I have my steady stroke enabled for that just the same as in my sculpt tools I can go ahead in any of these tools and I can enable steady stroke on that on there as well so um, this will be great for highlighting some of these areas around these wrinkles here so I can just quickly go in and do that as well. So uh, as well we have a color picker here I can just go ahead and grab the color I was working with and it'll pick it right off the model there. So let's just go ahead and actually create another whole new layer here. We're just going to work in diffuse as well. Just rename that layer. We'll call it stamps and I can take any of the stamps that we can use for our sculpting, same with the stencils, and I can actually use that to paint with. So let's just take, um, we'll start off with this kind of veiny crackly thing here and we'll just take uh, a black and let's just take a bit of a bigger resolution on the brush and you can see that I'm just actually putting down that stamp detail across the surface and then of course I can just go and quickly change the the color of that and continue painting this and I could change my brush size as I wanted to go there as well to change it so while I'm painting away here we're working with a fully lit 3D model I can always of course just go ahead and switch into flat lighting and what that's going to do is just give me um, a little bit of a better preview of my any kind of fine detailing I might be doing as I go so I'll just switch back to our our lighting there as well and I'm actually going to just grab a whole new layer here in our diffuse again and jump into our projection brush. So our projection brush is a really cool brush. It's designed to work with um, a stencil, an existing default one we, that we have in our list here or a custom one that you might want to bring in. So for example we could take any of these um, these stencils here that might have, let's just actually change this color here. So we could take any of these existing stencils that we have in here or we could bring a custom one in to work with. In this case I have um, a custom stamp here that I've, or a stencil that I've painted up. And if we just go into, maybe we'll paint something down on uh, the chest here just to show how this works. Um, I'm actually just going to turn my mirroring off on this and just focus in this one area here. So I have some scales I've painted up in another map and let's just flip over to turn our lighting off on there and you can see I'm just transferring the detail from this kind of custom image I've painted up outside of my box and I'm just quickly transferring it uh, from this projection image through onto my model there so let's just turn that off and get rid of our stamp and or our stencil and we can just see that we've transferred that data right onto the model there so that's a great way to to work with um, existing or um, custom stencils if you wanted to transfer some 
image data onto your model there as well. So I think what we'll do now is let's just take a look at uh, some of the tabs that we have related to our textures here. For example, we have the UV view. So if we jump into here, and I'll just step down in resolution on that so that we can see it a little bit easier, a little bit better. Uh, get down to here, and you can see that it's painting on that detail, and there's the UVs um, over top of that as well. So. Um, as well, we have an image browser here. I could use this image browser to grab any kind of custom image, uh, images I might want to work with. And then I can just go ahead and dive right into setting that as a stencil. So if we went back out to the 3D view on here, and we could just grab um, a custom stencil that we wanted to use on there. Uh, let's just go back to our image browser here, grab this guy, put him over to our stencil there, and go into 3D view and just bring this the stencil up in here so I could use this for maybe underneath his his chin there as well so just start painting in that detail and you can see that that's quickly transferring that detail onto my model there so it's a great tool for that um, what we can also do is take a look at some of the different channels that we can paint on here so let's just go ahead and actually um, create a whole new layer on here and jump into a bump value here. So I'm just going to paint some bump maps on here. I can use any of the existing stamps or stencils on here again. Let's just go into our stamps and actually start off with something, uh, well we can start off with that cracky vein type of thing and we can work with this. Now we're down, we're only working right now at the base level or just above the base level at 4500 um, polys, but of course with bump maps here that we're working with, this is actually going to work on the resolution of our map and we're working at 2k so we're able to preview that re in real time here and just start throwing in some bump maps so you can see that we get a nice overall result on that and of course if we wanted anything bulk on here we could just crank up the brush and start to get in to there as well and it'll preserve I can step up through my different levels here uh, let's just go up a little higher level there and of course you can see the performance is still the same still get nice fast performance all the way up through these different levels as I paint my bump maps on there. So let's take a look at a couple other little uh, different channels that we can paint with. I'm just going to collapse my diffuse and my bump on here just to make some more room. And we'll just go ahead and we'll create, uh, let's create a specular channel on here. And if I grab some black on here, I can go in and start to paint out some of my specular here or add to it. In this case, I'm just going to start removing some of that specularity so you can see the specular disappearing off of here. I'm not putting any diffuse color on or anything. I'm just essentially removing specularity from there. If I change my color to let's go all the way up to a white, I can of course paint that in. If I adjust my strength on that, maybe we just want a little bit of light speck through that area there. Or if I crank it right up like I had there, you can see I'm getting a lot of specularity on there. So that's really powerful. That's a great thing to paint with there too. And let's go ahead and uh, actually go into our object list and just jump into our default material. And let's turn on some, uh, actually to make this interesting here, let's turn on some image-based lighting and turn on our reflections here. So maybe we'll just put it up um, to a little bit higher here so we can get some real-time kind of reflections going on in here. Maybe we'll set this up a bit to about 0.2 so you can see that we're actually getting some nice reflections in here. And if we go into our layers, back into our paint layers, and I'll create a whole new uh, reflection layer. So we'll just create reflections on there. And you can see we're actually getting some some red from the, uh, the real-time image-based lighting that I'm using here. It's actually an EXR image, so we're getting HDR lighting real-time here. You can see I'm getting some red reflection on there. So we'll just go back to our, our paintbrush and change that color to a black on there. And I'm actually just going to quickly remove any reflection from this area here. So let's zoom out a bit so we can see that result. So I'm removing some reflection out. Maybe I just want to jump back up into my specularity here and get rid of some of that spec on there so that we can get a little better results on there. So I'm just painting the spec out, out of here. You can see we still have some reflection. If I jump back down in that reflection layer there, I'm actually effectively removing all reflection from that area there. So now we're not getting any reflectivity in and around that area. So of course we can go the opposite way. I can paint any color I want. I'm just using the black and white to illustrate what it can do here. And I'm painting in with the white here and we're actually getting all of our reflections back there. 
uh, similarity. I, I'm just going to use my my white on there, and I'm cranking up some some specular, and I'm actually using a stamp image with that one there as well. So you're getting specular based off of that stamp. 